Hi everyone, and welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video tutorial, we're going to be making some character customization. We're going to be able to take the shirt and the pants and add some random colors to it, so you can make something like a Stardew Valley character selector. So let's roll the introduction and let's get right into it. <laughs> Now you can find the demo project in the description below. So if you haven't downloaded it, I suggest you already do. You'll kind of have something that looks like this. Now let's just kind of go over how things are going to be done. We have a character start here, and this is where we're going to be doing all of our coding. But basically what's going to happen in the draw event is we currently have a body sprite being drawn, and then we have a shirt and pants, which are going to be drawn over top of that. If we take a look at the sprites themselves, the body does have some color, but the pants and the shirt, even even though they have multiple frames, they are currently 100% grayscale. And all I did is I basically went to edit image and then I set effects and then grayscale and just hit apply. And that will take your colorized image and make it 100% grayscale so we don't have to do any fancy things in the shader. So back in the character start here, we are going to be using a shader to draw the specific shirt and pants that are gonna have a couple of different variables in it. For example, we are going to be using a threshold value to figure out how much dark and white we are going to change in each of the colors. So what I want to do is I want to start kind of defining some of these variables. Now because I'm using GameMaker Studio 2.3.5 or above, I have access in destructs and I'm going to be using them just to kind of keep things nice and organized. For example, I'm going to create a structure for our coloring and inside our coloring, I'm going to have one for the shirt. And then I will also have one for the pants. So you can see that we're kind of just separating everything out. Now inside the shirt, I'm going to need a threshold variable. And I want to set up three different checkpoints for this threshold. So it's gonna check colors at three different spots or three different thresholds and then apply the red, green, and blue value. So for example, if we set up a variable called V threshold and we're going to make it an array. So in here, we need to use the values between zero and one because we are working with shaders and they use those values instead of 0 and 256. So for example, let's use 0 0.64 and 0 0.65 and then we will just use 0 0.6 or actually we'll set it to 1. So basically we're going to go through and it's going to check for any color that is between 0 and 0.64 and it's going to assign a red, green, and blue value and then it'll move on to the next threshold and then finally the last. So knowing this, we also need to have three more variables in the shirt. We need one for the red which will be also an array then we need one for the green again that's an array and then finally one for the blue and also an array. So each one of these threshold values does need a red, green, and blue component. For example, if it finds the lightness of 0.64, let's assign a 0.21 for red, a 0.21 for green, and 0.18 for red. Or sorry, for blue. So then basically all we have to do is go through each one of these thresholds and fill in the numbers. So I'm gonna skip ahead so that I have the shirt all done. So with the shirt all done, you can see that we have our thresholds. Each of these elements does have a corresponding red, green, and blue component. And then what we're going to do is we are going to copy this and let's paste it below. Now I'm gonna change these values because we're gonna have different colors to start out for the pants. Now that we have our coloring done, I think the next thing we should probably do is start working on the shader to figure out what variables we need to pass in. So let's go ahead and right click on shaders and say create and let's create a new shader here. I will call this SHD and let's call it colorize. Now in here, we are not gonna be dealing with the vertex shader because we're not gonna be modifying the UVs or anything. So let's head over to the fragment shader, which is the actual pixel color itself. Now in our character, we did have a lot of array values that we need to pass in and luckily we can still pass them in as arrays in our shader code. For example, we need a threshold the red value, the blue value, and the green value. So we can set up some uniform floats and we could say in threshold and set it to an array value of three. Now let's do the same for red, green, and blue. So now our shader is gonna accept an array for threshold, an array for red, an array for blue, and an array for green. Now inside the actual shader code, what we wanna do is change this up a little bit. We'll take out the V color here and we want to replace that with a vector four. Let's just call this pixel color and we will set it to the V color multiplied by the sprite itself. 
So now that we have the pixel color, all we want to do is make sure we return it at the end. Now there is a few rules that I want to have set up with this particular shader. And that rule is that if it finds a true black color, meaning that it has absolutely no white in it, then we're going to ignore it. So that means if I look at my pants here, if there was a black outline here, it would keep that black outline. So to do this, I need to check the pixel color. And because my picture is already grayscale, I can just check the red component. If the red component is bigger than 0.0, .0 meaning that is something else other than black then we're going to come in here and check those thresholds if it is only black then we'll return it which will just return a true black color and that will be drawn on our sprite itself so there's probably a much better way to do this but this is the way that i found out that works for me i'm not an expert in shaders but i know enough just to create some uh, basic ones here but basically what i want to do is i want to check the pixel color again so i'm going to say if the pixel color of red is less or equal to whatever is inside our threshold and i want to look at the first element then if it's less or equal to it then we're going to come in here and we are going to change the red value to be whatever our red value is with that correct modifier and we'll just copy and paste it so we'll then change it to blue change it to green and then change our values as well so our uh, gb i should do that the opposite way so now what's happening is if it finds the threshold to be less or equal to whatever we pass in, it's going to set up the red, the green, and the blue components for that pixel by basically just adding to it. So if it finds it at 0 0.07, then it's going to add whatever we have in for red, green, blue. Now the next job we have is basically just going through, copying and pasting everything and changing the numbers from zero to one so we go to the next element of the array and then finally let's change it to the last one which is our third element and so once this is all done then it's just going to set that pixel color into the actual sprite so to see this in action we need to pass in a few things from our sprite we need to pass in the thresholds the red the blues and the greens so let's go back to our character start and inside the creative event you can see i have a comment for the shader handles and this is where we're going to have to set up the handles to pass in those values so to do this let's create some variables we'll say in threshold and this is going to be equal a shader get uniform and inside we need to pass the shader name and then the variable that we want to hold within this handle and in our case we also want to hold the in threshold now let's copy and paste this, one for red, one for green, and one for blue. Now that we have the handle set up, we can go into the draw event and we can start actually drawing some of the information here. So for example, we are currently drawing the shirt. So if I were to actually hit F5, we should see just the shirt and everything and our character is walking here. Now we want to apply that shader to this specific shirt and I'm going to be using a function called with shader because I always forget to reset the shader afterwards. So I wrote this little function because I'm super forgetful so I don't have to worry about that. So inside the draw event, when we draw the shirt, we are going to call a with shader function. And the shader that we want is SHD colorize. So that will fill in. And then we will have an anonymous function or callback here. So inside this function, there's a few things we need to do. We need to pass those arrays into our shader. Now, luckily, we can use a shader set uniform and we want a uniform F array for float array. And then all we have to do is pass in the handle. So we will use our threshold and then we will use the structure called coloring dot shirt dot threshold. And now that will pass in the entire array into the variable. So all that's left for us to do is go through and do the same thing for the red, the green, and the blue values. Now with that done, I'm gonna leave the sprite being drawn, but if I hit F5 now, you should see a different effect than what we had before. Our shirt is completely gray, so we know that that shader is now changing the shirt. So what we wanna do is copy what we have here paste it with the sprite for the pants we'll replace that and then we'll just go through here and replace the word shirt with pants and now if i hit f5 i should have my pants being drawn in a different color and my shirt being drawn in a different color 
Now, instead of assigning each one of these thresholds a red, green, and blue value, what I did is inside the step event, I left this in. So if you hit the space key, it's gonna go through each of the arrays and just choose a random range for the colors and the thresholds. For example, if I run my game and I hit a space bar when my game loads, you can see that the pants are being colorized. Currently, they're pretty gray because we're not using much of a value, but you can see that if you continue on, you will get different values here. We had a nice brown one and we can keep going. So just with this little bit of information, what you could do is you could create a slider that would go from red, green, and blue, and you could just convert the 256 colors into zeros and one. So with this, you're able to make as many different colors as, as you want. As long as the images that you are using are grayscaled, you will have no problem converting them and using them in your game. So I hope this tutorial was useful and I'll see you in the next video. A special shout out to the following Patreon users in no particular order. Kataco, Mary, Edward, Annie, Robert, Thysite, Paul, Timothy, Ashby, and Victor. If you'd like to see the full source code to this and many other videos, check out my Patreon page found in the description below. Again, thank you all so much.